February of 2020. One month before a historic worldwide pandemic, the median price of a single-family home in the United States was $287,000. This growth in price followed a relatively steady trend line going back to 2014. What happened next can be clearly visualized on the graph as home pricing exploded upwards at a pace not seen for decades. In less than 16 months, prices went from $287,000 to $325,000, a 13% jump in just one year. This is Redfin CEO Glenn Kelman. If there's anyone who understands the housing market future, it's this guy along with the giants Zillow and Realtor.com. Their websites are the largest and most accurate collectors of housing data in the world, with significant resources spent on developing algorithms and predicting future prices. Glenn, unlike other investors who are motivated by their biases, is speaking on this issue using the latest data on sales, prices, demand, and supply. Take a listen to what he has to say about the future. The housing market is so hot that there are a lack of homes for sale, setting prices sharply higher. That's frustrating a lot of new home buyers. What do you make of this unique moment the real estate market is in and how long can it last? Well, we have demand as far out as the eye can see, but we are worried that most of the demand is coming from white collar professionals. The working class folks who believe in the American dream are seeing it run out of reach. And that has been the issue for 10 years. And the pandemic has just accelerated it. In a place like Las Vegas, you have home prices up 14% and employment down 13%. That is not a sustainable trend. So we would just love to see home affordability become a major focus, not just for the metropolitan areas and coastal cities, but across the country. At, at Redfin, when does the lack of home inventory or the speed at which it, at these houses are coming off the market start to impact your business, Glenn, and the ability to attract new home buyers? I, have, I certainly have friends in New York who have tried buying a home and have given up and now are renting. Yeah, well, it affects our business today. Our sales are very strong, but they would be much stronger if we had more homes for sale. So we are seeing people trying to buy houses, eight, nine offers, sometimes 20 or 30 offers. In Washington, D.C., a couple of weeks ago, we saw a house go for $340,000 over list. As you can see, multiple events have perfectly come together to create a perfect storm. Massive demand with little supply and a spiral of inflation in building materials, along with an environment that has underbuilt the number of homes necessary to keep up with America's demand. Prices are now projected to grow, another 12% this year, meaning that the average single-family medium price by 2022 should be around $364,000, a number that cannot keep up with wage growth. Homes right now are becoming luxury goods, unavailable to the millions of blue-collar workers who have seen themselves priced out of a market that was expensive for them to begin with. Take a listen to Glenn elaborate on this some more. Let's talk a little bit about that, that lower tier home buyer who you say the, the market is running away from. Is there yeah. anything in these rescue packages or in, in, in fiscal policy that's out there to help them? Yes. I mean, first of all, there's just direct stimulus, um, which is always going to help people feel more confident about buying a home. But I think the long term solution is to do something to replace subprime lending. So credit is at its lowest level in 14 years. You have VA and FHA loans, but they just can't compete against cash buyers. Right now, you will often see in listing remarks that only are available to the agent that you shouldn't even try to submit a bid with an FHA loan. And it drives me crazy because that is a leg up for the working class to be able to build intergenerational wealth. We just need to figure out what the market-based solution or the government-sponsored solution is going to be to lend money to working class people. It doesn't have to be a predatory loan. There can be a way to do that that's sustainable long term and that makes the credit markets work for everyone. Now the question of affordability. The National Association of Realtors publishes a report every month called the Housing Affordability Index. It incorporates mortgage rates, home prices, and medium family income to generate a number that acts as a measurement to gauge how easy it is for an average American to own a single family home. Obviously, due to the interest rate, a home price may be misleading as the difference in payments between 10% interest and 20% interest or 2% interest is massive. So this index incorporates factors like these to generate a more accurate look at housing affordability. If you look at the chart, you will notice that the current number, 173.6, isn't actually the highest in the last year, despite the fact that home prices have gone up over 12%. 
If you look back at April of 2020, you will see that homes, according to this calculation, were actually less affordable than now. So you're probably thinking, well, that was because of the interest rate. But even back then, at a rate of 3.37, the difference was very small. The most recent rate measured for March of 2021 is 3.13. So it wasn't the interest rate, and it wasn't the prices. Then what gives? Well, the median family income, which has increased from 89000 to 95000 That's quite a big raise, well over $6,000. But this figure is actually very deceiving. You see, it's estimated that government stimulus checks contributed as much as 25% of personal income to many people across the United States. Three different checks going out on top of unemployment benefits that had many people earning more for sitting at home instead of working. This government intervention has made these stats appear out of whack. If we look at the 2020 number, we can see median family income comes in at 84000 It's reasonable to assume that the true gain in income levels this year without government help is much less maybe even lower than before due to job losses. Without these adjusted numbers, and if the government doesn't continue to print stimulus checks, the true affordability of housing will look a lot worse, especially if median prices continue their trajectory upwards. Thank you guys for watching, and please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed.